Hi, my name is Wendy Glassman. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to present myself to the community as I seek a seat on the Asbury Park School Board. In my view, a Board of Education is charged with responsibilities and stewardships to serve and protect our most vulnerable resources, our children, our community, and our city's financial stability. The city's future depends in part on the decisions that we make. I believe that I bring skills, insight, and energy to serve the community well in this role. I'm the fourth generation of my family to live in Asbury Park. Dating back to the 1920s, my great-grandparents and grandparents had their businesses here, and my mother graduated Asbury Park High School. I'm a product of the public schools and passionate about public education. My goal is a quality education for the children that's fiscally sound, transparent and accountable, innovative, and recognizes the financial burdens that board decisions create for the public. In college, in addition to a dual major in economics and philosophy, I studied secondary education. I did student teaching in, in the Baltimore public schools prior to obtaining two law degrees. As a lawyer at a large bank for almost 40 years, I was one of the first women in senior management. I handled all legal matters, managed a large budget, and played an integral role in the development and execution of enterprise-wide strategic plans. I dealt with crises, downsizings, financial losses and risks, pandemic planning, and major changes to the business model. My experience includes working with regulators, monitors, and finding ways back to stability and success. I retired in 2018 as the bank's vice chairman. Since retiring, I volunteer my energy and knowledge here. I am the president of the Sunset Lake Park Conservancy and serve on the mayor's wellness committee. Two years ago, I brought an idea to the superintendent for the conservancy to bring a wildlife program for the third grade summer STEAM program. Collaborating with great partners and outside funding, we put together a phenomenal hands-on six week program. The joy and wonder for these kids was magical. The children in our schools are engaged, they're hungry to learn and experience new things. They're responsive, as are their teachers. As a lawyer, I developed keen analytic skills and a methodical approach to identifying the essence of an issue and how to help craft appropriate solutions. The challenges I surmounted in my successes in the private sector and what I have learned so far and will continue to learn through these volunteer opportunities will help inform my positions on how to best serve our children and community. The district must deal with so many challenges that other districts do not face just to be able to teach and for the children just to be able to learn. The Dream Academy, the career readiness programs in allied health, engineering and public safety, and the literacy and social emotional learning and counseling programs must be expanded. We can do more. I know so many people in the community who want to volunteer and support the children in their development and share opportunities that they have not or otherwise might not have encountered. In the next three years, the Board of Education must make and oversee the execution of financial and strategic decisions of unprecedented scope that will define the school district's future. As everyone knows, the school district is set to lose more than $24 million in state funding over a six year period. The legislation that set the formula for these cuts is draconian and unfair. I urge every person to express their concern and outrage and work towards an amendment or repeal. But for now, it's our burden to address these funding cuts in thoughtful, responsible, compassionate ways that do not simply pass the burden on to our taxpayer. On top of these cuts, the school district must bear the cost of this pandemic. We do know it, not know its duration. We do not know all of its health and social consequences or costs. There are so many questions that the scientists and public health officials and educators have yet to understand. All of these questions are new, information is evolving, and our school district must be responsive, must make the best decisions with available information, and be ready to pivot when the science provides new and different answers. We need a strong federal response to support the cost of the pandemic to the schools and the education for our children. Our district made the smart and very difficult decision to start fully remotely. The district had neither the resources or assurances of the public health officials that in-person learning could be conducted safely, nor the support of the families to send their children into the classroom. 
The board and the administration well understood that this pandemic highlighted the inequities in our community and the strain that remote learning would put on children and families. But I believe that, although not being privy to the internal deliberations, the district has made every effort to get families the equipment and connectivity and support that's needed and provided professional development to the teachers to allow them to teach as best they can under very difficult circumstances. Remote learning is not ideal for anyone, regardless of socioeconomic situation. But from what I've seen from the sidelines, I believe the district is a model of responsiveness to the student and families. I and my running mates, Carita Cook and Joe Grillo, have specific plans and programs in mind to continue to reduce operating and administrative expenses while at the same time supporting and adding quality programs. Our mailings to all voters outline these in detail. Some of our ideas will evolve as we see the course of the pandemic and the federal and state response. As just one example, while our school enrollment is low but growing, we may need to use all of our facilities to properly distance children if we wanna bring them back into the classroom, whereas the current plan has closed the Obama school. We do want to communicate and publicize the growth and development of our students and the programs the district offers. We want more children to come into the district because of the programs we offer. The families need to know the success stories we have to tell, and then the confidence that their children will be educated and secure will follow. I believe that if we communicate our successes better, publicize the career technical, vocational, and college prep courses better, we can bring more children into our public schools. And with that, we won't lose children to the charter schools. Those schools do not have many of these programs to offer. I believe we have the teachers and programs and better discipline to meet the concerns that parents have expressed about why they choose a charter school. We pay over $10 million from our budget to support the charter schools that have less oversight from and do not answer directly to our community. Charter schools are often products of large corporate entities and have different metrics driving them. They can be effective, but I believe the charters in Asbury Park are not as effective as our public schools and are an unnecessary diversion of money, families, and students. I hope to see more children returning to our public schools. To accomplish all of what we in the board has set out with limited resources will require sound short and long-term vision, astute strategic planning, fiscal restraint, creativity, and an efficient execution. I believe it is the role of the board to lead to set a vision and a tone that allows for the administration's execution of a sound execution, educational program. The day-to-day -day management of the program is the job of the superintendent and her staff. I will work to strengthen the board's platform to help guide and support a strong administration, bring rigor to strategic planning and reviews, help set clear and unequivocal expectations and standards, regularly assess professional and financial performance and share those results publicly and pledge to make smart, solid decisions based on community input. Despite the funding shortfalls ahead, I will work to build on the existing programs and offer new initiatives that help our children get on a path to success, however they may define those goals. I will work to turn the school district's financial challenges into an opportunity to rethink our physical footprint staffing and costs. I know that by holding ourselves accountable and with community support, we can bring the district to new levels of excellence at a cost acceptable to all. Thank you for your time.